Oh, hi there. I am a woman in my early 50s. I run a channel mostly about autism topics and I'm a big Chris D'Elia fan. <clears throat> so now you're probably shocked. Wow, the Chris D'Elia, the guy who groomed underage women, who ran a sex cult where he like branded those young women uh, when he was like in his mid thirties, like he slept with, you know, women still in their teens. He played a groomer on Netflix. And then they had to edit him out of that movie, Army of the Dead, after it had already wrapped shooting and replace him with Tig Notaro because it was so heinous what he did, you know, exploiting all these women. I mean, a company doesn't spend millions doing that unless that guy is an absolute scum of the earth, right? And he's still banned from, you know, a lot of the major uh, comedy uh, venues. When he performs, you know, people show up and protest. I mean, who knows why this guy is not in jail? The fact that this guy thinks he's going to be able to actually perform comedy anywhere and people are going to want to listen for comedy's sake is hysterical to me. It's the biggest serial rapist in recorded human history announced a spring comedy tour. So I knew I had to make a video about this because this story is so relevant and so juicy and all these juicy details you know, played out in, in front of our eyes because so much was about social media. In fact, you know, Chris D'Elia, in spite of his fame, doesn't seem to be the guy who goes to a lot of parties and like hooks up with women he meets there. Seems like the young women he exploited uh, reached out to him on social media, you know, through Instagram and stuff, uh, slid into his DMs. And then he kept contact with dozens of women uh, as he went on his tours, you know, through social media, you know, DMing back and forth. So we have everything. We have the screenshots, we have the pics, we have the, we have all the evidence of how it all went down. And yeah, it's uh, kind of weird that he's not in jail right now. Uh, so I definitely wanted to look into that. But first, why am I a Chris D'Elia fan? Why from those hundreds of stand-up comedians do I pick him, you know, when he's like that horrible? So he's actually quite different. His comedy is so positive. You know, all, all these comedians that constantly complain about life and are, are sarcastic and have like the, the, have stories about how life kicks them in the butt again and again and again. Life is like this endless slog of, yeah, funny stuff, but stuff that brings you down. Well, Chris D'Elia is unapologetically positive. You know, his motto is life rips. His stand-up comedy exudes joy. I mean, when he does these bits, sometimes, I mean, he cracks himself up so much that he can hardly make it through the scene. When he enjoys himself you know, with all the difficulty of interacting with others and interacting with women and, you know, in his earlier shows, dating and now having a family and a son, the underlying thread is life is good. You know, life cracks him up. You know, he, he deals with the adversity through laughing. He's not politically correct. I mean, so many of his bits are about how men constantly want to fuck and women <laughs> constantly make it difficult for men to fuck. <laughs> I mean, one of his jokes is uh, men want to have sex with all the women all the time and women only want to have sex with one or two dudes some of the time. <laughs> the math does not work out. So I don't know, that stuff makes me laugh. Yeah, some of that stuff some might call misogynistic because, you know, he jokes like women are just objects to have sex with and a lot of comedians don't go there. You'd like to get an entry curse to this pussy, would you not? Well, in that case, you have to carry out three minor tasks. The first task being, you have to take me to a restaurant that I want to go to, but you have to choose it. He's a dude's dude and in the specials, you know, I mean, he was in his, you know, mid late thirties. Now I guess he's in his early forties. He talks like a guy who's like in his early twenties. And you know what? That, that goes with his almost childish enthusiasm about life. 
he's not as beaten down and cynical as some of the other comedians his age. I mean, he swears a lot. Now, I don't swear personally, but I find it very funny. And, you know, comedians, you know, in the vein of, you know, Louis Black, just done right. It's just so funny if somebody just out curses and <laughs> drops F-bombs left and right. Um, and even though his comedy is, you know, really dirty in that regard, uh, he actually apparently li lives a really clean life, you know, doesn't, has never taken drugs, has never uh, had alcohol. Here's something I don't want to pretend to do any anymore. A lot of people don't agree with this, but I don't want to pretend to want to go to your fucking party anymore. I don't want to go, okay? I've been to so many parties, had fun zero times, all right? And again, a lot of his comedy is about how much he's enjoying himself. Life rips. Life is awesome. And I would encourage anyone to watch his, uh, especially his first uh, special on Netflix, uh, Incorrigible. It, and uh, yeah, it, it makes me smile all the way through, you know, except the part in the middle where he talks about how women should you know, give birth to adults uh, instead of babies, because I'm a visual thinker and that just hurts thinking about. But, uh, but oh my God, makes me laugh so hard. I used to have a long commute and you know, I would listen to his you know, congratulations podcast and it would crack me up so much. And that is so, so nice to, to have something like that that just makes you laugh. And uh, again, his laugh is so infectious. Now I'm on the spectrum. So when I like something, I find often other people on the spectrum like it as well. And I think with Chris D'Elia, it's, I mean, first of all, it's his intensity. Um, his rambling, you know, so many of his bits are about, okay, I don't understand how, how human interaction works. So he lays it all out, how, how he sees it. And then, you know, just riffs on that for many minutes. So that's one kind of uh, his uh, bits. And then there's another kind where he takes a scene where like something happens with another person could just be an interaction of like, you know, 10, 15 seconds. And he riffs on that for like five minutes, everything that's going on with him and his body, his thoughts, what he, you know, with the other person, the history, the, the challenge, you know, what he thinks about it afterwards. And I think that appeals to a lot of people on the spectrum as well, because we like constantly overanalyze ourselves and others you know, because social interaction is a cognitive effort for us like a person with dyslexia who has to like work extra hard to learn how to read, you know, that's, that's how we are. We have to work extra hard to make that uh, human interaction smooth. And it is so, so funny when he explains where he fails and, you know, how much he does want to connect with others. Then at the end of the movie, there's this really cute moment where the little kid in the movie looks up to Kazam, Shaquille O'Neal, and this is what he says. Um, I just want you to know that, um, I consider you my friend. Hey, I lost it, man. I didn't even cry how a man's supposed to cry, like on his knees in slow motion, holding his dying friend while choppers blaze over his head. I cried. This is the noise that came out of my mouth. <gasps> down my face they shot the fuck out like i was a japanese cartoon or some shit just oh, 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 oh. but yeah autistic people like to analyze others uh, like we are watching a you know national geographic documentary and you know he does that uh describing his human interactions so well. And of course, that's not limited to him. A lot of comedians do that, but he does it so well and he's so funny. But yeah, to fully understand what I'll be talking about, I would almost make, you know, two things required viewing. You know, maybe even stop here, watch those things and then come back. One is, you know, Chris Elia's first Netflix special. The other one is a YouTube video called
and in the you know Chris D'Elia story, there are so first of all there are so many things that just make absolutely no sense if you look at them. And no, he didn't have power over them other than that he was a star and they were his adoring fans. But this was not like Louis C.K. or Harvey Weinstein, um, where you know you have a man who has some sort of power over uh, women, you know, exposes himself or, or does just heinous stuff. Because you know these these guys cancel them, throw them in jail, whatever. Because if uh, you know if you are you know, any any man in power over a woman, you know, could be a boss, husband, university professor, college instructor, casting director, or whatever. If 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 you bring in the mix that the that you expect like sexual favors from a woman, otherwise she might experience repercussions. Dang, that makes me so upset. And I'll talk about my personal story um, as well, which figures into all of this. But Chris D'Elia did not have power over these young women. They could have at any point uh, seen, oh, yeah, you know, Chris D'Elia, he, uh, on his Instagram, you know, he goes with his family to Disney World and he, uh, you know, is in a relationship and, you know, he's, he's clearly not single. You know, he has a son on the way or now he actually has two kids. Oh, you know, let me let me not slide into his DMs or let me just block his number and just not take it further or whatever. But uh, but yeah, for some reason, with his busy tour schedule, he was able to string along dozens of girls like across America, mostly through social, you know, um, media, Instagram, Snapchat, and they had to be at his beck and call. And actually, even in the women's words, I mean, this heinous sexual predator, uh, you know, was accused of, you know, just such horrible, you know, um, unspeakable acts such as, you know, picking outfits for them to wear. A woman complained how she had to pay for her own Uber to take her to the tattoo parlor, you know, to get that Crystalia branding doesn't sound to me like a man going on, you know, 40, uh, having spent, you know, years grooming uh, teens to accommodate his, you know, sexual deprivation. In fact, you know, as a bit older woman, uh, you know, to me it's amazing what we don't hear in these stories. Which again, like, it's weird to me that, that the heinous selfish, narcissist, sexual predator is into more vanilla stuff than, you know, a lot of guys who are normal, but, you know, it's just a bit kinky. And yeah, that's certainly an aspect I also think about, you know, are we teaching uh, young girls that as soon as a man asks uh, something of you that you're not comfortable with, you know, even if you feel you're in a relationship of some sort, kick him to the curb. But you know, in our modern society where kink shaming gets shamed, uh, it's, it's really hard to open a discussion of, you know, setting hard limits and being 100% comfortable um, with that. I think when you hear that suicide rates are so high among teen girls, it's often, you know, they look at corn movies and then they go like, wow, this is all the stuff I have to do to keep a man. And then they go on Reddit and the men complain about all the stuff that their girlfriends don't do. Now, and yeah, this is another thing that pisses me off so much because there needs to be way more awareness uh, that men, you know, even famous men in their 30s should not hit on much younger women. And how harmful that can really be. Even if the women, you know, start, even start a conversation completely voluntarily, but it's it's just not fair. You know, women want more than sex. You know, they want a real connection. You know, let let young women have that connection and discover intimacy, etc., with men closer to their age. Yeah. So Chris D'Elia was really naive and dumb and horrible in that aspect. But you know, society doesn't send clear enough messages. You know, it, it's very often like as soon as a woman is, you know, legal age, it's like, oh, it's just two adults, you know, uh, you know, stay out of uh, relationships between two adults. But yeah, as, as a woman who was a victim of that sort of thing myself, I mean, I was, 
jobbing in high school, working for a newspaper, you know, writing up, writing up like town events like, you know, Schrebergarten, you know, get togethers and, you know, school concerts and, you know, Fastnacht parades in our German town and, you know, writing up police reports, you know, on a typewriter. And, you know, the editor who was reviewing a lot of my work, married in his mid thirties, came on to me when, when he figured out I had a little bit of a puppy love crush on him. And yeah, he uh, like, you know, laid me back on the, on the table. And I remember how the edge of the table really cut into my thighs. And he was like sticking his tongue down my throat when I'd never kissed uh, and like French kissing me. And it, it was so gross. And then there was this like weird thing going on where, you know, I told him, I mean, once I told him, well, you're, you're, you're married. I don't, I don't really like this. And he, he took his wedding ring off and said, here, that, that doesn't mean anything. F you, Klaus. Many, many years later, like 15, 20 years later, I was, I was thinking, what, what's this guy up to now? And I looked up his name and, you know, he was, I think, still an editor or retiring. I mean, they wrote a big article on him in the newspaper that we worked for. And it had all about, you know, how he was traveling with his wife and enjoying, you know, retirement or upcoming retirement and, you know, having a great time. And he stole my innocence. He, he stole my innocence. I, I deserved my first kisses to be butterfly kisses with you know, some other guy who maybe would have puppy love for me, where it wasn't like for mostly for sexual ki kicks. So all that stuff, you know, is dear to my heart. And of course, you know, me as an autistic woman, I was extra naive. You know, it was like things were happening to me. I didn't know how to react. I had nobody to talk uh, to about all this. But yeah, that's why it aggravates me even more that Chris D'Elia did what actually men are told never to do in that situation, which is he apologized. He said, I did wrong. Uh, he, he said, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have, you know, done this with, with young women. That was inappropriate. You know, I want to be a family man. You know, I had a sex addiction, but I'm going to therapy. I want to better myself every day. And everybody in media knows you don't do that. You know, it's like it's like the Andrew Cuomo thing where like allegation after allegation, you know, he attacked the women's credibility and he said, no, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. If it's your word against the woman, you know, as long as you keep that little bit of doubt, you know, you can maybe get away with it. And you would have if it wasn't, you know, that just women and more women kept coming out, like in Andrew Cuomo's case, who was, you know, consulted by Chris Cuomo how to react in that situation. We see it with Trump too. Deny, 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 attack the women. And Chris D'Elia actually apologized. I never got an apology from Klaus. You know, and Klaus did... I, you know. And Chris D'Elia was and is huge. He has so many young men looking up to him. It would have been such an opportunity, just as his movie was coming out, uh, Army of the Dead, to have him talk about his sex addiction, how, how wrong it was, what he did. And, you know, especially given that, no, he did not run a sex cult. cult. He did not um, pursue anything with a woman knowingly underage. You know, he was dead to everybody, you know, except his diehard fans. Who knew just, just he isn't like that. And maybe I'll eat crow and he'll, I mean, seems like he doesn't have a ton of vices. But if he has a huge sex drive and he is constantly women throwing him themselves at him, you know, that's kind of a volatile situation. But um, yeah, let's take a look at, you know, how he's uh, been treated. If what she's saying is true, I don't think you can come back from that. It's over, bro. That's a bad look. But with that case mysteriously being dropped, Chris would have you believe that he's a family man now, working diligently to get through his sex addiction. 
Um, I stand by the fact that all my relationships have been consensual and legal. Two weeks ago, the Chris D'Elia problem was uploaded to YouTube. An hour-long documentary summarizing the allegations made against Chris in the summer of 2020 relates to the potential grooming of young women. The documentary then goes on to claim that since his initial cancellation, Chris D'Elia has not put a stop to his old ways, despite what he said in his apology video. Now, although the Chris D'Elia problem presents all their evidence in a very convincing way, it's still technically all hearsay. No legal action has been taken yet. And yeah, I usually don't ask for likes, but I would really like that if people Google the Chris D'Elia problem, that they see the other side too in the form of this video, not just this documentary that we learn more about here soon. And given that that's the case, today's video is solely focused on comedians' reactions to the Chris D'Elia problem. I know that it's been a really long time since you've heard from me. Um, and when the news broke, um, I put out a statement that said everything I've done has been legal and consensual, and that's true. And I wanted that statement to speak for itself. And I'll play later a clip um, of a very good video by Devin Nash about cancer culture and about how the cancellation affects most the people who actually feel bad about what they do like and they 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 read stuff and it affects them and they want to want to be better uh, but the most narcissistic people you know they're like teflon they don't care what people say about them you know they'll attack those people back but chris delia actually even dropped from from you know public view for a while uh, and that's something that Devin Nash points out that you know cancellation works best with the people who take that negative feedback and cancellation most to heart. So the Chris D'Elia problem was uploaded to YouTube on December 20th, 2022, and currently stands at over half. <laughs> He's still, you know, forging ahead. There's something about forging ahead. Yeah, he didn't even, he didn't even flinch. He was like, you know what, dude, whatever. <laughs> An hour long compelling documentary. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he had like a sex called, I love the idea of him giving like a motivational speech to the girls. He's like, listen, we're down. We're not. Spoiler alert. We look into that documentary here uh, very soon, but it's mostly around one woman who's going on 30 and that documentary takes phone calls where she explains all the heinous stuff that Chris D'Elia did and sets it to pictures of him in a very unfair way, in my opinion. And then uh, a recording where she video calls him and, you know, again, he apologizes. He seems very downtrodden, you know, very depressed, you know, clearly a man who got caught cheating, who hates, you know, hurting people's feelings, never got, never gotten tiny ounce of that vicious sexual predator or how the way or the way they describe him <laughs> i know many of you are looking at these windows thinking you're gonna get out tonight and get on a bus and go live your life but i'm telling you right now that is not gonna happen <laughs> dude i was saying with you it was just a sex cult of underage girls in Hollywood. Name was Chris D'Elia. Life rips. Um, Chris D'Elia's wife, that psycho. Yeah, Chris. Oh! Oh, he's, he's a Pac-Man. Oh, okay. oh. Show us. Yeah. You know about Pac-Man? Round, 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 round. What's up, brother? You look cool in your hat, man. I like your outfit. Thank you. <laughs> man of the hour is here. Woman of the hour is here. Eight months pregnant, walking up a flight of stairs. Yeah. I was the animal collector's dad. He just... You know, Crystal Leah's wife. Jesus, you see the way she looks at him? Ooh, ooh, ooh. My man, my motherfucking man. That's not something to say to that. I didn't take Cody, Cody in there, my motherfucking man. Um, all right, so yeah, that, that's good. Now I can do the regular episode. Thanks for telling my listeners. That was like 40 minutes. They're gonna love that. Wow, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah, I know. Flies by. It does. Well, when there's two people, when there's one, sometimes it, it moves as a snail's pace. All right, okay, I love cool. you. Love you. Uh, see you in a little bit on the flip. Yeah, uh, to clarify, in this video, the Chris D'Elia problem returns. Uh, this guy talks about, you know, not just Chris D'Elia, but also uh, two friends of Chris D'Elia that he's doing a podcast with. 
they're trying to cancel all three of them and are frustrated that you know Chris is still doing well. For really exposing so many people to the point where it's it's you can't actually like Brendan Schaub. Okay, they've really created an atmosphere with all the video pieces and everybody. It, the the peer pressure is too thick. It would be you'd be a contrarian to like Brendan Schaub. Yeah, he's talking here about uh, Chris's friend uh, Brendan Schaub that he's doing a podcast with. Uh, but you know, you could replace Chris Delia's name here. Same thing. Day and age, or somebody who's out of the loop. But that's very few people now. Thanks to all the channels and Reddits who have made fun of this guy. You know, maybe you did have some use after all to focus all your attention on a guy. See, because nothing happened before. So that's why it's different now. It's different now because we are watching these channels actually fall to kid views. What are kid views? Kid views are, of course, the views a child could get while uploading an experimental tape to YouTube. And yeah, those channels uh, get the channels critical of Chris D'Elia mine him for hundreds and thousands and millions of views. You know, whereas that podcast that Chris D'Elia does with his friends doesn't get many views, which he's talking about here. But very quickly, you know, who's Brendan Sharp and uh, what is uh, this Red Bar comedy? Yeah, so Brandon Sharp is a, a stand-up comedian who also, you know, was into mixed martial arts. You know, a lot of young men look up to him and uh, start on television, had, you know, a special on Showtime and um, is engaged to a long-time girlfriend and has two sons born in 2016 and 2019. You know, again, any man where a woman has a child with them and then goes back <laughs> a few years later for seconds, in my book, can't be that bad, uh, or I'm inclined to think they are not that bad. Yeah. Might eat my words with all of this here, but, you know, again, like, why, why that absolute hatred? Anybody could get 42K. Uh, you know, a show with Chris D'Elia, Brendan Schaub. Well, I can't get 42K. Staff members, how is 42K paying the bills? By the time you split that up, that 42K, what are we talking about? $10 a paycheck? So we're going to look into how they're surviving, what their numbers are. And uh, again, uh, congratulations to maybe, yeah, the hyper focus on one guy I always used to say. Yep, got to destroy yeah, them financially. Other guys, too. There's so many other bad guys, but they knew. We take it back. We take it back because they knew they focused all their attention on Brendan Schaub for four years. And now it worked. The numbers have finally fallen off. He's got nothing left. So, and his reputation is so tarnished. It's uh, But it's almost like. Any cool, sane guy knows you don't like Brendan Schaub. That's like the word on the street now. It would take a real special-minded person to go out of their way to like Brendan Schaub in the atmosphere they've created around him, right? Like any sane 50-something-year-old woman would not be a Chris D'Elia fan after everything that played out in the mainstream media. A lot of sane people hate Brendan Schaub. Because what are they supposed to do? So Brendan is like, yeah, it's very, very low in a low place to be, almost to the point where he needs to apologize to the public or leave now. It's time. And the views have gotten so bad, these guys might financially crumble. And that's what we're going to look in today on a segment we call, How They Paying Those Bills? They have two families. Now, this all started when the Chris D'Elia article came out. We all loved that this week. He got a huge new Rolling Stone piece. I put it in next up if you want to pull it mm -hmm. up. But we were like, how many times are we going to read a stupid article that's like, Chris D'Elia did this, yeah. Chris D'Elia did this. We know he's the worst guy. We know he's the worst guy. There he but is. Chris so D'Elia, do everything him. I say. Ten women claim comedian Chris D'Elia preyed on them. Rolling Stone magazine. No. Oh yeah, let's let's quickly glance at that article for context. Uh, came out uh, May this year, so you know, just a couple of months ago. 
Do everything I say. Ten women claim comedian Cristalia preyed on them, left them traumatized. The FBI is looking into it. How Jasmine Wolf was visibly uncomfortable. The 28 year old looked around. Wait, I thought he, that was him about grooming young, young women. Um, he had instructed her to send over an explicit video of herself. She only had seconds to comply. <gasps> he had all the power over her. He'd become furious. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the Crystalia that we know. Crystalia didn't care. Yeah, the season of you, I think that's where he starred as a, a minor character who was into child grooming. The bad guy. Wolf describes needing a distraction, you know, so she wrote a one-off message uh, to an attractive comedian. Yeah, it seemed harmless. Crystalia requested nude photographs. Wolf obliged. It almost felt like kismet, Wolf said, of their budding relationship. Now, she's on social media. She sees that he has a wife and I don't know if he already had a son. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So, you know, he was living with Kristen Taylor, maybe not uh, married yet and uh, had a newborn. Yeah. You know, for perfectly normal for a 28 year old to reach out and try to get a relationship going. <laughs> yeah, and then she found out that other women had the same connection with him. Soliciting nudes. Yeah, their relationship took place mostly online. <laughs> the toll their relationship took was devastating. I lose such a sense of myself as an individual person uh, because he told me I was nothing. See, this is like such a bullshit double standard in society that we have the boss babe, that from a young age women are capable, they are sexually liberated, they take charge of their life. You know, they, you know, in commercials and movies, it's like always the bumbling um, idiot husband or boyfriend or uh, whatever, where the, where the capable woman has to take the lead and, and show them what's what, you know, just like in the latest Indiana Jones movie. But then, oh, if a woman is wronged by a man, oh, like the, the damsel in distress comes back in through the back door. Oh, the woman had no agency. She had no control. <laughs> yeah, so Wolf says she never took any money. Uh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> Why not say, I never demanded any money? Why not say, I never mentioned any money? But again, there are screenshots out there of what she texted. Several of the women alleged Delia took advantage of the godlike status he had with his fans for his personal sexual gratification, dangling tickets to his show to at least one woman. You see, this is what I mean by, like you read and read and you go like, we heard how people talked about that article and how they talk about Crystalia. And uh, like, wh wh where, where are the, the absolutely outrageous details other than that he seems to be a sex addicted man who you know, probably cheats on his wife quite a bit uh, due to women throwing themselves at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> FBI neither confirms nor denies. Uh, and that turns into, oh, he's investigated by the FBI. Yeah. Delia was controlling, allegedly tracking their locations, picking out outfits, giving curfews, pushing some of the women to get a tattoo <laughs> of his initials. Yeah, let's look at that tattoo. I think there's a picture of her somewhere here with that tattoo. Oh yeah, uh, there's that like on the on the left of her neck, you know, that's the CD uh, tattoo that, you know, he kind of forced her into, I guess. Yeah, well, you can read the article yourself. Um, to me, I mean, even if what the women say uh, is true, you know, first of all, he never pursued something in person with anybody under age. So all these other comments that we heard that are just complete BS. And then again, like so much of this looks and sounds like 
so strangely, you know, vanilla, cringe, you know, like weird fan fiction. I mean, he walks out on stage and has has a crowd absolutely you know, cheering for for minutes. You know, does he need a single woman telling him, "Oh, you're God"? Even if he did, I mean, some men are like screwed up. I don't care that much as long as he does it with adult women, which apparently he did. Again, that woman is going on thirty. Yeah, in some of the stuff, if you read it uh, fast, you might miss here that you know, like a girl accepted a, a twenty-two-year-old accepted a drink from a male member of Delia's entourage. Uh, I, I mean, to me, that shouldn't even be in an article that is about him. Yeah, the dynamic further shifted when Delia instructed her to get on her knees. Cooper f says she felt cornered and scared, lowering herself to the ground while shaking and crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she recalls ruining a nice dinner with friends when Delia gave her a near impossible curfew in the middle of the meal. <laughs> Also, she wound up beating the clock. There was no price in meeting Delia's demands. That's the whole point, the reward that he wasn't mad at me. <laughs> Delia's attention became a lifeline to her, believing that he cared about her well-being, claiming he would check in with her about her treatment, asking about her weight and requesting for her to step on the scale for him only allowing her to call him daddy, calling her his girl, and becoming angry if she hung out with boys. Again, it's all he said, she said, and there could be tons of recordings and, you know, screenshots of text messages. You know, don't tell me that these girls who were so into him wouldn't, like, preserve every scrap of communication with him. But there is like there's like nothing, like virtually nothing. And he's he's a horn dog who probably cheated on his wife, you know, with multiple young women. Uh, did they need to spend millions to edit him out of a movie for that? I mean, those millions could have gone towards, you know, how many ten thousands of hotel nights for like young LGBTQ or young uh, women. Uh, who are abused or who run away from home and need need a place to stay or you know give it to a charity and yeah i'm selfish that movie would have been great to watch with him in it i was looking forward to it you know but uh, back to that red bar uh, comedy years ago i think it was during the pandemic could have been right before the pandemic I noticed Eric Griffin started doing cooking streams. He would go on Instagram live in his house and put the phone here, and then he would cook in his kitchen. Oh yeah, Eric Griffin is the third uh, guy uh, on that po podcast with Chris D'Elia and Brendan Sharp. And I noticed he had a starter kitchen. He had the kitchen that you're supposed to have when you're like 17 and a half living with your cousin because you ran away from home. Something like that. I couldn't believe. Wow, how, starter kitchen. How low income Eric Griffin was being. You know, to me, if you're on TV, you have a better kitchen than that. And it was one of those as low as you go stoves. You know, where they're white, just pure white metal with the black grates of gas. Thing. What's with the poor shaming? No screen. No digital dance that's for sure. What an ass. Let's look him up. Seems seems that he's you know routinely taking down comedians. Let's see the comments. Mike is the embodiment of content cop executioner. I've unfollowed many comedians I thought once thought were okay due to Mike. 
Yeah, we call Megan Lewis in fear of Mike David. Mike is the hero I didn't know I needed. Mike David is the funniest thing going. Kid's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> no more is more entertaining and funny than Mike David. See, it makes me like, you know, I mean, that's, that's depressing that people love him so much. The guy who's making fun there of somebody having a starter kitchen. No touch bars, you know, no LEDs, bare bones. And to see Eric Griffin at such an old age, you know, there comes a time when you're 50, I'm sorry, you must have a nice stove. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then um, now you guys are stuck with Brendan Schaub, Eric Griffin, and Chris D'Elia. None of these people have any chemistry with each other. This They're all the kind of equally retarded and dim. And then these two are zoning out. Chris is always half asleep. I mean, Chris is looking monstrous, by the way. Like, come on. Like, look how fucking... We also have jewels in the house. Jesus what's up? Christ. What's up? Look how despicable he's become. Imagine having the Rolling Stone write that about you. I would move to Beville. You know where that is? Where? Beville. It's a hellhole. <laughs> Trust me. Um, so Chris is having fun. I mean, he's in a shitty mood because he's on the show. He probably knows our... So Eric Griffin is the one with a starter kitchen on the right here. 2.15. Yeah. We see him check his phone for the first time. Yeah, so we're watching, and it appears that the news of the article comes out while they're taping this, and we get to see Chris's reaction. All the unsatisfied customers just keep it. I mean, can you guys... Grow a spine? Is this rewarding to be on the shittiest podcast with the three <laughs> shittiest? <laughs> the, the pot calling the kettle. This poor sack of shit. And what's your excuse, sir, for liking these three? Do we need to come to your house? What kind of car is that? Looks economy. You want to keep living an economy life? What? Now he's shaming the... People who are calling into that podcast. You pathetic puke. Chris is fine. Brendan's fine. Now I could see maybe somebody accidentally they likes Eric. They probably pay people around LA Yeah, they probably the just go on Fiverr. Hey, will you pretend to call it? things at the bottom of the thing. I mean, he can't control it. His eyebrows were going like this. And then his eyes. So he's just like an autistic loser. Whoa. Oh, geez, I was chilling. Fake paying attention. Quick, click back the two arrow keys between the flashing frown and smile. Wait. Nice. Oh my autistic, autistic loser. Zooming in on that. Watch. The <laughs> okay, there's Chris. You can see him acting heinous. And imagine you're going through this. You just pick up your phone, and they're saying, "Oh, he raped ten women," and then you got this jackass cackling. So annoying. The FBI is looking into you. God, I hate that sound effect with that glass. I don't care about that shit. You don't care about that shit? I think you cry probably a ton about it to the point where your wife thinks you're like Ooh, a and pitiful slave. Do you think that slave. he cries to her about yes, it? Yes, yes. Because that's like disgusting. And I think she's probably like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like she thinks he's like a pitiful loser. She has more power. Yeah, she has like power. more power. Yeah. Um, nah. I'm gonna teach my fucking son feelings, dude. I'm gonna teach him. By the way, he's already seen his dad cry fucking 468 times, but I'm gonna teach him feelings like a motherfucker. I'm gonna teach him it's okay to cry while I'm crying because of some shit, you know? You know, it's okay to cry. <laughs> <clears throat> See, your dad does it. And he's just going to think, pussy? Yeah, pussy. What if that was his, those were his first words? Man, I'd give him a trophy. Um, I love him so much, man. It's crazy that he could, he'll be able to fucking watch this one day. Um, if you are watching this, I love you. Um, so much, man. <clears throat> 
It's like empathizing with Chris. While you're waiting to find out what the rape article about you says, enrolling is this person. It's a shame that someone that had, that does have that talent, this much talent and that much likability is that much of a fucking weirdo and like can't, ha can't help himself. How embarrassing. He tried. This is how it should work. Fucking Chris D'Elia. Made some mistakes, no doubt, man. 100%. Anything legal? Absolutely fucking not. Learned from it, worked on himself, does three hours of therapy every single day. He's such a better person now. He should be the post boy of cancel culture. He's a better person, better human being, better dad. Like, he had a, a kid throughout all this. You know, I think it's so fucking... He went from being a rising name in comedy to being better known for a massive sexual assault and pedophilia scandal that broke... What? That's, yeah. So this is the big documentary that uh, everybody's talking about. In the summer of 2020. And I'm praying... I One million views. I'm praying what I'm hearing isn't true. Honestly, my first reaction was just like, dude, like, why, why? I don't know him. I don't know him like that. Okay. okay. With this happening. And also, Laura Vitrelli, who told CNN that at 19 years old, Delia invited her and her friend to a, quote, party after a meet and greet. But upon arriving, there was no signs of a party, and Chris was alone watching cops and eating shrimp scampi. Chris had alcohol for the girls, despite them being 19 and him being completely sober. The girls quickly came up with an excuse to leave, but as they did, Chris pulled out his erect penis and chased them out with it. It's just funny to me he's never truly addressed these three pretty verified allegations. Anyway, I just wanted... Yeah, I miss the times of, like, Led Zeppelin and those, you know, classic rockers where if girls, you know, climbed into their tour bus, you know, it, it was kind of clear what was going on. Two would have been open to having a sexual encounter with Chris D'Elia. In fact, many of the assaults I've been told about started as some sort of consensual hookup, but became unconsensual when Chris wouldn't take no for an answer. The common thread that I get from almost all of these stories isn't a sex addiction, it's a power addiction. A power of controlling other people addiction. I was in high school at the time, so I uh, initially reached out to him through Instagram and I sent him a DM telling him how much I really enjoyed his special and I really wanted to see him live and he actually quickly responded with, um, where are you from? And I told him, Michigan, he said, well, I just did a show there not too long ago. He would Snapchat me a lot of him laying in bed shirtless and all that stuff. And then I kind of got the feeling of, oh, he is definitely interested in me and more than just um, a fan. Well, I ended up finding out after I showed one of my friends his stand-up that she had also reached out to him. And we didn't even realize this until we were hanging out and we were both Snapchatting somebody back and forth, back and forth. And eventually she told me, I'm Snapchatting Chris D'Elia. And I said, shut up, because I'm literally doing the same thing. That's just... But she said that she wasn't allowed to leave her place without... Chris's consent and that when he came over it didn't matter if she was in the mood or if she wasn't in the mood she had to do whatever he wanted to do there were a lot of girls that just did everything he told them to do because they were afraid of the consequences if they didn't and a few of those girls ended up getting his name or initials tattooed onto themselves one such girl is a victim that goes by the name of Jasmine. She was deep within the supposed Chris D'Elia sex cult, and even has the branding to prove it. Yeah, she's the one from the Rolling Stone article that we saw earlier, the woman going on 30 with a million tattoos and a little branding CD tattoo on, I guess, her left shoulder. Pay for and he didn't. I ended up having to pay for it myself and it was like the last of my money, literally. So I ended up having to walk 
until I could afford the Uber to get back to my Airbnb. So big allegedly here, but you heard that right. Crystalia is such a cheap fuck, he made one of his cult members pay for her own tattoo and Uber to get branded. I wasn't in LA at that point. I had flown out of Santa Ana because I was... It would be funny if it wasn't that sad. ...supposed to meet with another... Um, he would just say on your knees. If I didn't do it right away, like, he would freak out. So I would try to find, like, a bathroom to go into or somewhere really quick. And then, like, when you were on your knees, he'd have you send videos doing whatever he told you to do. There were times I was literally on my knees for hours. Some so this was all through the phone, through social media, through texting and sending videos back and forth. So weird that there's no evidence anywhere, but apparently he blackmailed her by saying that he would commit suicide if she didn't erase everything from her phone. So that's unfortunately why all this solid proof doesn't exist now. You're probably asking why. Why is she going along with all of this? But really, that is a question of control. Manipulation comes in many forms, and master manipulators know the right tool for the right job. So instead of using blackmail or the threat of leaking nudes, for instance, this manipulation came in the form of a threat of suicide. Again, I'm the type of person I don't want to see someone do that. I, I want to see justice, yes, but I don't want to see something I, I don't root for something bad to happen to somebody so he knew that and took advantage of that and he all the time would pull comments like this again alluded to suicide and so he knew it worked and yeah send me nudes or i'll unalive myself uh get on your knees or and, and film yourself or i'll unalive myself that's that all makes perfect sense. That's totally not fan fiction. Uh... To envision him having a daughter made me physically nauseous, especially because there was the whole daddy thing that, like, that went deep, too. This daddy. Is time to bring up the fact that Crystalia has something of a daddy fetish, and even extends to calling listeners of his podcast babies, which, I mean, isn't isn't great for the whole pedophilia thing, if I'm being totally honest, dude. But being called daddy is innocent enough. I mean, that seems pretty common. Surely Chris couldn't make even that fucking weird, could he? Like, he would get very angry if you didn't call him daddy. So anyone who says here the P word pedophilia, to me, has already completely lost the plot. There is, there is nothing even in what the women said that would smack the least bit about what that word means. Even at one point he said to myself and another girl um, on separate occasions uh, referring to my dad he said he's not your daddy, I am. And so it made it seem like it was a lot more family oriented than I originally thought. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> and in there I had all the screenshots and I was shaking. I was so nervous. Because, like, whenever there'd be something that upset him, it was always comments that alluded to suicide. Then that would just terrify me into submission, basically. Yeah, yeah. Harvey Weinstein constantly threatened, su threatened suicide, you know, if the women wouldn't go with his demands. And, you know, Louis C.K. and, you know, Andrew Cuomo, all these big bad guys, they always, the, they, they're controlling predators, they always... They always threaten suicide to make the women do what they want. When we were on the video call, I deleted my entire phone and that iCloud account. So I, for like three years of my life, have no pictures of my daughter, of myself, of anything, because I just cleared out that entire phone. Yeah, that was the only time he had called me until when we broke up. He called to apologize uh, after I had posting yeah so she started posting on anonymous accounts all kinds of crazy stuff about him and he figured out it was her and he reached out to her and of course she filmed herself and that's like the big piece of this documentary that you know where she records himself talking with him this is 
something that was family oriented. Even, you know, when he was at Disneyland, he was texting his other girlfriends while he's posting pictures of his fiance in Mickey Mouse ears. He's texting his girlfriends saying, you would look so cute in Mickey Mouse ears. I think at this point, the claims in this video have gotten so intense that I feel like most viewers need something or someone at this point. Was... Yeah, intense. Mickey Mouse ears. Wow. <laughs> legitimize much of what has been said to them. Luckily, I was able to get in touch with Chris's former tour manager and friend. This bro with a heart of gold. He was willing to sit down with me and talk a little bit about... Yeah, East Coast bro with a heart of gold. Totally not holding a grudge for some reason or another. Because people in the industry who suddenly get way more famous than their friends, you know, they, they never end up with some people having grudges. He told me it's on his computer at home. His wife is sitting there with all this proof at her hands, at her fingertips, and she just can't seem to get her hands on it. After I spoke with her and gave her all these date and times that I saw him, uh, like everything that I had, and she still refused to believe a word of it. But as Jasmine was saying in that conversation with Chris, the doubt from Kristen as well as others is something that's actually fueled her to try to get justice more. And having people like doubting something that I experienced for two years, like that was two years of my life, and for people to say it didn't happen, that pisses me off. And I maybe it's a pride thing but i just i yeah hell has no fury like a woman scorned and i feel like for other people who've gone like who've had similar experiences it's validating because that's the only way that i started to feel okay is when i were able to talk about things and open up about things and we can we can talk about it from now on so uh, this is you know the call where she records herself on the phone with Chris Delia, and I think that's that Jasmine woman who's uh, about thirty years old. And that never came from. I really meant that when I like that never came from a place of like just despising you and like being out to get you. Like I was upset, and I know how I felt going through all that shit. And I just, I don't want that for other people. And in my experience, anytime you've said things are going to be different, it's not. This is because Jasmine knows that Chris is in yeah, a Jasmine. endless cycle of repeating his abuse. Now, uh, that phone call right there, that to me sounded like a man who's kind of dev devastated. He probably cheated with her, feels very bad about it, feels bad that he hurt her feelings. I feel nothing of a vicious sexual predator there. I mean, even the fact that he called and, and is, you know, apologetic. When she was, you know, spreading like really harmful stuff about him from anonymous accounts all over the internet. Nothing has ever stopped with Chris. It's never even slowed down. So when he put out the apology video, I was so genuinely confused by it because than I do. I've been in comedy for almost 10 years and I'm pretty positive that this is only going to lead to less opportunities for me in the future. You might say I'm trying to win favor with the woke SJW side of comedy, but I'm a straight white guy and I don't even paint my fingernails, okay? Hearing all this crazy shit? No! You th I don't want to work on this project. This sucks. I want to go play Pokemon and do <laughs> mushrooms in the woods. This is truly an awful creative experience, but I think this video is important. When you've been a demon for a decade, I don't think you get to whip it all into shape with eight months of fake therapy after using and continuing to use our art form to map a juggalo tour of sexual assaults across North America. Yeah, it's sad. So we get now why I'm making this video. And one big part is that what what are young men going to do in this landscape? And you know, for my channel, especially autistic young men who have even more trouble navigating this very complex social landscape and dynamic now, where women can go from boss babe, sexually liberated, calling all the shots to exploited and 
raped and assaulted uh, and and maybe maybe take part in in games that seem really sexy but then suddenly change their mind and it was all denigrating and humiliating and when they go to the press your know, mainstream media only believes them there there's no balance it's always the men that are at fault. Let's watch a little bit of this shocking statistic. I don't know if it's true, but you know, I, I would believe it. Currently kind of obsessed with the role of men in the modern world, their retreat from uh, relationships, their retreat from friendships overall. Have you considered if there is a broader dynamic going on here that ties together the general sort of malaise that men are finding themselves in? Um, well, I'm not a philosopher, but I do demographics and I can count. Uh, but the the idea that, uh, the idea, let's see, how do I put this for a family audience? The idea that young men would not be interested in real live women uh, would have been kind of uh, absurd uh, 50 years ago. Did you see, so my favorite, uh, most terrifying piece of research that I've seen recently was from Pew. Uh, in 19, in uh, 2019, 61% of men said that they were looking for either casual or long-term relationships. In 2023, that number has dropped to 50%. One in two men between the ages of 18 and 30 aren't looking for either casual or long-term relationships. Now, well, for the men that are listening who have been through that age bracket or in it, you understand the power, the reality distortion field that is the male sex drive between the ages of 18 and 30. The fact that you can have something that happens that can overcome that is yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah, it's like science fiction. Uh, What's going and, on? Come on, Nicholas, give me, put your best philosopher tinfoil hat on. Seems so obvious. I mean, Chris D'Elia, that was a huge deal uh, in 2020. And me too, where, you know, it's uh, men are guilty until proven innocent. Um, can't, can't blame them if that statistic is true. I'm really not that surprised. Let's watch a little bit of this very, very good video by Devin Nash. Only you know, 70K views. Uh, this deserves so much more views. Most unfortunate and sucky part of all this. It's what bothers me the most, right? And I remember when I was running esports teams back in the LCS days, we had players that would go on Reddit in tears. They would go on our League of Legends. They would read people posting things about themselves. Oh, he's, oh, he's in esports, so... Uh, his clients that got cancelled were, of course, more in their 20s versus late 30s. But, and they would not want to play anymore. And a lot of them actually quit because they just couldn't take that heat. So the people that actually end up getting cancelled are the ones that are ironically the ones that are actually willing to fucking self-improve a lot of the time. <laughs> For cancelling the people that are actually at the forefront of trying to make them better. I often say that, like, I'm a little bit lucky that I skipped a generation or two on the way to the Internet. Because if you guys knew me when I was 16 to 20, uh, I'd be canceled 100%. percent <laughs> thrown out of public school because of, of fighting, right? That I can talk about now. But, like, I, and I know a lot of people in my friend group that's the exact same way. Yeah, that's another thing that, you know, these very young men, they need, you know, somebody on their wavelength to relate to. They need a positive role model uh, that is a bit like them. And, you know, Chris D'Elia is and, and would have been like had he been allowed to become the super famous comedian that he was destined to be would, would have been that wonderful role model for so many young guys because he is not perfect because he is sex obsessed because he is dealing with stuff possibly uh, is asinine and, and 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 the the amount of forgiveness that we afford to these people is laughable in the face of the fact that the vast majority of people that are casting those stones could not even do so in their own houses because they would break the glass they're in. That they quit and they never become the actualized individuals that they ought be to actually properly lead a movement like that. 
Yeah, so fortunately, Chris D'Elia is hanging in there and, you know, he's still, you know, playing tours and interacting with his fans and you know, going his way. But, you know, he could have had a much larger audience, you know, with, with more Netflix specials, you know, being in movies. And, in, and on the other side of it, encourage narcissists, people deliberately manipulating you and malevolence to thrive because those are the people that can get around it, not be affected by it. And we real like it's it's the old old adage of the boy who cried wolf, right? Is that like when the real injustice happens, we want to be there for it. And luckily, in the summer of 2020, when all of that information came out about women who were legitimately abused in 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 scenarios like this, there was a there was a voice for it. Yeah, haven't talked about that, but that's so true. If you viciously put all your energy into canceling Chris D'Elia, uh, and you alienate the young fans that do truly like him and don't see the huge problem here. I mean, obviously he did wrong, but, you know, to that degree, viciously canceling Chris D'Elia, you know, the, the, next, the next person who actually deserves to be viciously canceled, you know, people will be less open to even listen to any arguments. Audience that is just attached to that drama like a lamprey, like like a fucking like a fucking like one of those fish on the whale, right? Just sucking it like a parasite. That's the right word. Um, rather than actually a person who's engaging with it because they want to enact change to be heard. And I think that uh, if I was going to say anything like a, as as sort of a last thought, it's that every single person has the individual ability to understand how this works, and then uh, we have the beautiful ability to consciously step outside of the story and say, you know what? I'm not gonna be affected by that anymore. Or I'm going to personally research and do everything that is possible objectively to understand the situation and have a fair and balanced opinion of it. And for every one person that does that, we move up a little bit. Yeah, so let's not be puppeteered by manufactured outrage that is supposed to get the clicks Let's look more at the, the real situation. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this video. And sorry for rambling on so much about this. But again, you know, I hope so much that Chris D'Elia somehow gets, you know, completely uncancelled so he can return on his path, you know, be that great role model for for more young people. And yeah, I'm selfish. I want to see more more Netflix specials by him. I want to see you know, more movies that he stars in. And let's not let that get ruined further, you know. And, and please, young women, can you please stop trying to slide into his DMs with with sexy pictures or whatever? Thank you. He's a married man with two kids. And yeah, I don't want to end this on a depressing note. So I'm going to play some clips that show just how much he's beloved. And yeah, count me as one of his big fans. There is no Chris D'Elia problem or the, the Chris D'Elia problem is a problem with our society, with how gender genders interact right now, with um, cancel culture, with people using super negative content, you know, for cloud and to farm clicks. And that a lot of the idols that young men can relate to because they talk about sex, they talk about being frustrated, they talk about you know, enjoying life uh, in face of all the problems that young people are facing. Yeah, I could, I could go on and on, but yeah, again, uh, if you feel that if somebody Googles the Chris D'Elia problem and you want something else to rank, but vicious takedowns of Chris D'Elia, you know, please click like on this video. Uh, I hope I explained myself well enough, uh, though I probably stepped from one soapbox to another and, and didn't, didn't get quite things right. But yeah, this is how I feel. And I'm still a Chris D'Elia fan. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Thank you, man. That's the first one of those, I'll tell you that. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, man. We love you, man. Thank you, so glad you Thank you. I appreciate it. Just a little life rips. With the face there, that's cute. Love it. This stuff, this one I'm trying to do with my wife, and she won't do it. Trust me, trust me, you won't regret it. It's so cool, man. Listen, good to meet you. You made us laugh together well before we became who we were, so. Oh, wow, very sweet. That's how we do it. I believe her name was, got me this for the little new one coming. For just. <laughs> no, that is so Aww. sweet. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty tough. That dude. is so cool. That's no way, dude. Look at these. <laughs> oh, two, two pucks? Yes. yes. What is it? <laughs> wow. What you got here? I make portraits out of layers of paper. Oh, wow. And I know how much you love your son, so I made a portrait of you and Calvin oh out my of God. paper. Whoa. Cut with an X-Acto knife, glued on top You're of You're kidding me! No, it's for real. This is unbelievable! This Thank is for you. me? That's for you. Wow. Because you're an inspiration to me, and I like to pass on my craft to people who are oh, man, masters of so, theirs. Oh, so, man, so, so yeah. sweet, dude. Thank you, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. And it's exactly at an hour. That's great, dude. I'm so I'm so happy. I gotta film this at some point. This is great. Boston, I love you. Let's do another one. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, up front. You got the first row, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, I got your tickets early. Thanks, thank, you, thank you, guys. We, we both had quotes from you in our wedding vows. Oh, really? Knowing it. Really? We read them separately. Yeah. No way. We read them at the altar. We had quotes from you. You didn't know. I swear yeah. to God. Like, we love you. I'm thank, in your relationship now. Thank you yeah, so much. Right. Can I record you name? saying hi to her? Angela. Angela. Where are you? you? You missed out on the tickets, on the meet and greet tickets? Yes, yeah, you missed out. You got your tickets first. You didn't tell her. You're the bad friend. She hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. <laughs> one Be good, guys. Peace out, Chris. He wants a tattoo. Uh, I want a tattoo of life rips. Wow, this is coming out good. There we go, that's right. good. Bro. I'll tag you in it. Yeah, man, let me know. Thank you, man. Be good, buddy. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm signing his shoes because I am an athlete. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, brother. Good Thank you, buddy. Can you put a 10 second gamble? Oh, I, I don't. You guys I fucking doesn't know how to use a phone. To I wanted to do a TikTok. He just wants a hug. Is this for the tour report? It is, yeah. yeah. Tour yeah. report. <laughs> Leah, killed it. So here, this is the thing from King Berry, who is a. Um, He's on my Patreon, and we correspond on the Discord. Let me see. No, it's only hey. for me. Thank huh? you very much. It's only for me. I've gotten him a few oh, wait, you can't presents. It's weird. I've gotten him a few presents, and I've never had some. You weren't warm the way you are warm right yeah. now. That's because his presents have never been this good. <laughs> wow. Hey, and why have I never been warm to him? But, uh, Be Beavis. Beavis. Oh, that's really cool. That's sweet, man. First time seeing you in Atlanta. Love it. Repping you always. My future's too bright, man. Love you. Hey, what's going on, Chris? Uh, we actually saw you in Fresno, California. We're here in Atlanta right now. Uh, we can't wait to see you. Someone from Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> when I started listening to him, he just was in Atlanta. And so I've been waiting for like four years. And we just got this. Don't push me with all the tour dates. I love you as a comedian. I'm an aspiring comedian myself. You actually give me hope, bro. Bye. What's up? Look, okay, you gotta show the go bring it to dad and say happy father's day. Can you bring it to daddy? Happy father's day. Okay. Wow, first comedy show. We've been listening to him since since the beginning. What up, Delia? It's your boy. Alright, it's my birthday. Okay. Spin move. What's up, bro? Uh, I was gonna wear the shorts, but it's too cold. Right. But I got the matching pink, so they have the matching shorts, but life rips all the time. Me and her just got married this month. Calvin. Calvin, yes. do you want this dear black child look? No, I like okay, this. Okay, well then you're, you're racist. <laughs> so you're racist. I like this. Calvin. No, this. Well, you could do both. <laughs> 